Hey friends, it's Gene McNaughton with Success Resources. I'm here with Nick Santa Nistasso. Yeah. Nick, what's up, brother? Doing great. How you doing, brother? Nick, you are known as an actor, a supermodel, a fitness coach, a motivational speaker. Now, when I'm sitting here with you, I don't think fitness coach and fitness <laughs> model and all that stuff. What tell us about yourself? Yeah, so basically, like you said, you know, I'm a global keynote speaker, a bodybuilder, a model, but basically, you know, my goal is to go into a room and get people to look at the world a little bit differently. So I label myself as a shifter of perspectives because I want people to walk out the door and look at the world a little bit differently. You're here in Los Angeles right now, National Achievers Congress. Yes. We've got 3,500 people out in the audience. What brings you to events like these? Um, proximity is power, right? So, you know, I one of our core values, not only in our business, but in personal life, is being a student of the game. And so that requires you to drop your ego and realize you only know what you know. And so that means we get into any room we can to be in proximity of all these amazing speakers like the ones we have on stage here today. And so just getting in a room and always just learning more from whether it's like real estate or mindset or psychology, whatever it may be, we're always trying to get into the room with some powerful players. I've heard you talk about, and I've read, read some of your work about disability. Yeah. And one of the things you say is that the biggest disability is not what people think. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, as I self-reflect over my life and all the things that I accomplish, you know, people say, you know, how you do this? How are you happy? How are you successful? How are you fulfilled? And I tell them, you know, over the 23 years of my life, I've realized it's not the physical body that holds us back, but right. it's our programming. It's our mindset. And so, you know, people on the street, they could see like, wow, look how disabled that guy is. But when we compare our programming and our mindset, I'm the one who's able here. And so, you know, you're asking me, what's the biggest thing that people kind of hold themselves back on? It's, it's their programming. It's the mindset. It's the limiting of beliefs. And so I want to be a physical example you know not just like you know going up there and saying something but really walking walking the talk and showing people like dude like regardless of what hand life has dealt you with like it's our duty to play that play that hand to the best of our ability I want to go to model and bodybuilder yeah yeah extrapolate that a little bit okay yeah so basically coming off I was I was like a prankster my first thing was like I was a, a famous prankster I was doing like zombie pranks and I realized two things that when Nick has kids and grandkids I want them to know me for much more than crawling around Walmart pretending to scare people and I wanted to do something um, bigger and better that fulfilled me and I was always I think I was always envious or looked up to people that were in shape and never thought I could do it and so when I moved back home from LA I was analyzing the industry and I looked at the fitness industry and I said well there's no man with no legs and one arm bodybuilding if I do this successfully people will watch and they'll catch on and so you know, my knowledge and training got better, my knowledge and nutrition got better, and my physique started to change, and I started posting, you know, my, my lifting videos and these bodybuilding videos, mm -hmm. and, you know, people started to catch on, and that's the thing with, like, fitness is you can't buy a fit body, and so I realized that if I could obtain it, if I could obtain it, you know, the six-pack and the muscles, that people can't take that away from me, and it'll also build my, you know, my confidence, the way I feel about myself, and so that's how I got into, got into bodybuilding. We know that rarely is there a straight line to success. Right? And you've achieved some pretty amazing things. What were some of the tough points? Like you had this idea, you had this vision, and anybody watching this knows the importance of goal setting and visualization. Yeah. But it couldn't have been like, hey, I just showed up and started working out, and now I'm in shape and yep. getting all these views. Give me some of those hurdles you got over. What was yeah. the biggest one? So one of the, the, the biggest is like r figuring out what exercises I could do. You know, so I go into the gym and a gym that is made for full body people that can grab things and they can take things off the clips and do all these things. And so I had to figure out a way, well, a lot of ways to, you know, work out efficiently. And so basically I sat down with some of my wrestling buddies and they were going through some motions. And for the first six to eight months of lifting, I was only lifting my left side. I was like, oh, forget this side. I can't use it, you know. <laughs> and then I realized that in bodybuilding, you know, symmetry is important. But going into the gym and I, I feel like it's everything in life is just like, um, adapt and overcome or trial and error. Everything's trial and error. Just like try something. If it doesn't work, what are you going to do? You try again. And so my whole life, you know, my parents always adapted things or tinkered with things and made spoons and loops on things. And so I was always just looking for solutions, right? And so my whole thing is like not using lang the language of can't but how. And not only is that, you know, more empowering, but when we use the word how, it opens up our brain to stimulate more solutions. And so, you know, going into the gym and just really focusing on micro movements and saying, you know, if I sit up on my posture and I only move my body this way, that it, I can contract, you know, my chest just as much as, you know, my full left arm, right? Because I think the biggest challenge for me is this right side was shorter. So I can't get as much movement as I can on my left side. And so basically it's really just being one with my body and, and realizing the movements, like the, the slightest micro movements can, you know, contract your muscle just as you, if you had a full left side. So going into the gym and just like literally falling on my face over and over again and figuring out, you know, what works for me, what doesn't work for me and how can I always improve. But most people, when they fall, 
quit. Yeah, because they're not used to it. How'd you keep going? Uh, you exercise the muscle of falling on your face over and over again. I mean, that, that was, it hurt. It, like, yeah. You had to scrape yourself up, and I'm sure in the, there had to be something in the back of your mind saying, you can't do this. How'd yeah. you overcome that? Um, something that I've, I've realized is I've always been confident in my vision, you know, always having something that pulls me. And so in those dark, dark low times, I would always think of like, well, dude, this is why you're doing it. And, you know, I think the why is the, one of the most important things that pulls us even on the days where we don't want to do it. And so I've always had these visions of, you know, I, I want to model on beaches with good looking girls. Right. I wanted the six pack and I want to, you know, model on the cars and stuff. In those dark low times, I would always remember my why. And that would always kind of fuel me because like, the journey is everything and what we become during the journey is like is it's it's the whole process right and so in those hard times i just know that you know i'm going to get up and i'm going to be better but the thing that people quit all the time especially now is because you know right now you can Uber Eats and have food right away, or you can Netflix and have your mm -hmm. favorite movie right away, and everything becomes expectations. You know, everyone just wants things fast, and so when they try to build a business nowadays and they're not successful in the first year or two, they get pissed off. It's because they're not used to doing the hard stuff. And I think, especially in a generation now, a lot of, a lot of kids, a lot of people coming up are coddled. And the big, biggest advantage, you know, from the get-go, when I was born, is my parents literally sat me down and said, dude, you're born with no legs and one arm, the world's not going to adapt to you. You gotta adapt to the world. Mm. And so, you know, my dad told me, I interviewed him for a podcast, and he said, Dude, if I would have put little loops and little, you know, hoops on the zippers and the cabinets, you would have got smacked in the face by reality at an early age because we, we, awesome. we handicapped your world, you know? And so my parents literally just gave me suggestions. They put my food in front of me. They put my clothes in front of me and say, figure it out. And that was like an advantage, but everyone can have that advantage once we just exercise the muscle of like problem and solution. That's all entrepreneurship is, is like, what's the problem? How are you going to find a solution? So I want to go through the success formula. This is... Okay inspiring the success formula says no step number one get clear on what it is you want concise yeah clear and concise. what is it that you want right what now you, what are your goals my goal um, what I've realized is like I've been put on this earth in a way unique unicorn body a unicorn situation and I want to just give as much as I can like when I die I want people to say that guy gave everything that guy gave everything to everyone. And so, you know, my, my version of success or what I want to get across is just to show people, like I said, regardless of what hand life has dealt you with, especially with the victim mentality. I mean, at least once in our life, everyone has asked themselves, why me? You know, we all do it, we're all humans. Right. And I want to show people like physical body, like look at this guy, he's basically destroying all my limiting beliefs, he's destroying all my excuses. And how you do that is just get in front of people. And like I said, you know, there could be a guy on stage and you may be a little bit skeptical, he's got a full body, but when I come out, I have this superpower of making people comfortable and making people transparent and vulnerable. And when people are transparent and they open up, that's where transformation happens. Because so many times we're sitting at events and we have these barriers in our mindset, right? We're like, oh, this is kind of skeptical, I don't really believe what he's saying, but when a man with no legs one arm, one arm comes out and he's actually jacked and he actually has a six pack and he does all the things that he says he's going to do you kind of get a little relaxed and you open up that you open up your brain for what he's about to say step two in the success cycle is you have to know why your goals are a must what is your why you talked about your why you never told me what the why was yeah my why um, you know I view I view myself as like a lighthouse or, or you know like a lighthouse or um, a lantern and what I mean by that is I want to give as much light as I can to people in dark places because I know what it feels like to be depressed, suicidal. I know what that feels like. And so I don't want people to feel that way. And so I want to give as much light as I can to the world. And I can only do that if I fill myself up with the things that I enjoy too. And so uh, my why is basically to take advantage of this situation that you know I wasn't supposed to live. They gave me a 30% chance to live. And how can I maximize my potential and my contribution while I'm here on the earth? And how I do that is just getting in front of as many eyes, as many stages, as many bodybuilding competitions, yeah. do everything. Like I met The Rock and I told him, I said, I'm gonna do what you did. And he said, what do you mean? I said, I'm gonna take over the world just like you did. I'm gonna be everywhere. And that's my goal is to just be in front of everyone's faces third step of the success formula take massive action yeah you have a lot going at you coming at you right now probably a lot of opportunity yeah and I gotta believe it takes longer to do regular tasks yeah so how do you keep yourself in massive action how do you get done what needs to get done to take you towards these big goals 
Yeah, so, you know, the, the term, it takes a village, it's not just me. And so, the, you know, how I take massive action is I have my team, I have my buddies, I have my, my best friends, my business partners, Don and Ratmir, who basically, you know, tell me what day it is, where I need to be, where I need to show up. Um, and they just keep me doing the things that we did in the beginning. And oftentimes, you know, once we start to get a little bit of taste of success, we tend to fall off and not do the things we started to do in the beginning. And so these guys keep me accountable for right basically life. Yeah. You know, not only, like, they could be life handlers, but they're my brothers, they're my best friends. These are the guys that keep me in the mass of action and always have you know a plan like Nick you need to be doing this like Nick you need to go to this event like they just keep me in line um, but if you don't have those people like I said you just need to find like your main goal and start pri prioritizing like what what is most important what can I get done today that's gonna move me a step closer because what I've realized also is when I look over my life and I look at my lowest and darkest days, they come from the days where I'm not moving the needle forward in any area of my life. And so whether that's personally or business, and so, you know, always the one finger technique, the one thing technique, and that that's do one thing today that you know is going to evolve you into a better human being. Awesome. It could be reading a book, it could be riding a bike, it could be doing some meditation, but humans love the feeling of progress. And so if you find yourself in a slump, if you find yourself in a rut, write down all the things you need to do, what's the most important, start priori priori mm -hmm. prioritizing and start checking those things off. The fourth step of the cycle of success is measurements. What are some measurable goals that you have over the next one, two, five years? Yeah, so one of the one of the goals that we had from the beginning, like a measurable goal, was to get on the Tony Robbins stage. You know, it was the, one of the first things we wanted to do, and we made that happen. You know, a couple weeks ago, and now I have the you know thanks the opportunity to tour around with Tony. Um, but measuring for me, like in the speaking, it's like how many engagements can we get a month, or how many engagements can we lock in a year? I remember writing in my goal, uh, writing in my goal sheet like two, three years ago. I was like, I want to speak 50 times a year, and then this time we had like 60, 70 times a year. I'm like, oh my nice. god, you know, that nice. happened way a lot faster than I thought it was and that's like the power of you like you said measuring is writing goals and I think what's so powerful is reflecting on those old goals and realizing like oh my god like in that moment when I wrote that goal I thought it was so far out there and then two years later you're like all these things are crossed off and, and, and then you get you got bigger yeah, ones yeah like, always, you don't even celebrate like I'm on to this thing right well and it's important because I think a lot of hustlers a lot of achievers that's another thing is we have a hard time celebrating mm -hmm. like I don't know yourself but I myself me and the guys like we have a hard time like you know smelling the flowers smelling the roses and so that's extremely important to to self-reflect on like wow I started on I started at a I'm at C or you know I'm at J whatever right. it may be wherever you're at the journey but always reflect on your wins because you know so many people think it's the destination it's the I'll get I'll be feel successful when I get this house when I get this you know watch whatever it may be but it's it's the journey of who you become that is really fulfilling so let's review know what you want know why it's a must take massive action measure results and the key to speeding everything up is modeling finding somebody yeah. who's done what it is you want to do who are your best models who do you look to for inspire you're the inspirer yeah. but who who takes you to that next level I have three people I have three top people uh, Tony Tony Robbins Ed Milet and Andy Priscilla and these are and and you know they talk about don't try to model too many people so you know you can't try to model all these different people so try to find three people that you know fit your core values fit your message fit your who you, who you are as a person and then model those and like you said you know those who have the success that you want get around them proximity watch their videos whatever it may be but find a way to just get more extract more information out of them because you will condense 10 years into two years or 20 years into 10 years and that's the power of modeling who's on your podcast shortlist my podcast uh, Ed Milet, Andy Priscilla, Tony Robbins, um, Tom Bilyeu, Impact Theory. Um, yeah, that's probably, that's probably my top ones. Nick, there's lots of ways that everybody can learn these days. We can read, we've got podcasts, you've got audio programs, YouTube, and then there's live immersion events. Now, some people would say, well, I can get everything I need on a YouTube video, and there's huge value in that. But what is the real power of being in this immersive experience? Yeah, absolutely. I think the first thing that comes to my mind is simply human interaction. And so what I mean by that is, especially now with the phones, like humans, as humans, we're losing human interaction. And so when you go to an event, not only are you surrounded by like-minded people, right, and you feel that energy, but the transformation really happens within the conversations of one another. Like the real breakthroughs, when you like talk about your, your breakthrough moment and someone shares with you your, their breakthrough moment, like you're literally having transformation just learning from each other. And so going into a room and having people that are, you know, buzzing on the same frequency as you, because a lot of, a lot of achievers, a lot of people out here are like, man, I don't relate to people. Like, I feel like a lot of people don't think like me. Well, then go to like personal development seminars. And also going there, you know, you're gonna do exercises with people and talk to people. And most importantly, it's gonna get you out of your comfort zone, right? You know, they were talking about today, they framed it, it was like, did you guys come here to be comfortable? 
And they're like, no, like you don't come here to be comfortable. And so, you know, you go there and you go to these events and you learn and then you, you know, do exercises and you meet people. And it, the funny thing is like, you will go to a personal development seminar, you'll go to an event like this and you will literally make best friends that you'll have for the rest of your life. You'll meet people that are buzzing on the same frequency and that's hard when you feel like you don't fit in. And so if you find yourself just like feeling like you're, you're out of it or you don't fit in, like go to these seminars because not only will you get the speakers, you'll extract the knowledge from the speakers, but you will be around like-minded people, which I think is one of the most powerful things in the world, is being with people that think and vibrate on your same frequency. Isn't it true that you'd never know who you're going to meet? You, I mean, one hour ago, yeah. we didn't know we were gonna be having this interaction. Yeah and Anthony came and made a recommendation. I'm like, absolutely, I wanna meet this guy, yeah. and here we are. But you never know what can happen when you go to a live event. You're gonna meet people, you're gonna meet people of the same mindset, people that are looking to take their life and their business, their happiness, their health to the next level. Absolutely. And then you run into a guy like you that's saying, look, anybody can do it, and there's a thousand people out there like you that are hungry for more. So with that said, to our audience, What's one message of hope you have for them or transformation or how to take things wherever they are to the next level? Yeah, I'll leave them with this. So there's so many things in our life that we say, you know, I have to. You know, I, I have to go to the gym or I have to build this business or I have to answer that call, I have to knock that door. But if we literally switch our have to's to our get to's, our life would change in that moment. You know, we'd be more appreciative of the things that we're able to do rather than looking at it as a burden. I get to go to the gym, I get to build this business so I can provide financial freedom for my kids. Like. Most of the things that we complain about, it's a privilege, you know, because even I, a man with no legs, one arm, as I sit here on this couch, there are millions of kids and adults that would switch places with me in an instant because they just don't have it like I do. They're, they're, they're confined in hospital beds, they're confined in wheelchairs that would give up everything and anything just to go outside and go to the gym for a day or just to go outside and breathe the fresh air. So who am I to sit here and say, oh man, I have to do this, I have no legs and one arm, I, I have to go to the gym, I have to build a business. No, it's, it's, a, it's you get to, it's all a privilege. Hey, if you got value out of this and you want to get more, go ahead and click subscribe. There's no big sales pitch. It's going to be value-added content delivered to you every single week.